Uh, having a quorum, we're going to call this meeting to order at 6.39. Um, adjustments to the uh, agenda. We need to add a uh, uh, action, on, action item on uh, certifying uh, tuition payments. And uh, we also need an action item on uh, approving, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Tara? What did the, the what do you give us to sign off on to pay bills? Warrants. 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 Approving warrants. Uh, a warrant approval policy. Uh, can you say the first one again? Uh, the first one was um, a tuition uh, uh, payment certification. Thank you. And the second one is uh, a warrant uh, authorization. Thank you. Uh, there was a Somebody said something in an email about an executive session. Did that, do you think that's warranted or not? Did I did did we I need? Saw, any, I had asked for email. that, but we can wait till next time. Okay. Okay. Good. Just want to make sure they get missed. Okay. Um, with those uh, adjustments to the uh, agenda, we'll go to the. <laughs> we apparently have a, a few different public comments on the the agenda. We'll go to 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 the opening public comment um, before we get into our discussion on the uh, tax issue. Does anyone uh, have anything else that they that they wanted to bring to the table, or is is it really uh, property taxes on the public's mind? Cheryl. Absolutely. Um, no, thank you. Any other before? Okay, then then uh, let's get into it. So, uh, for those of you that weren't at the first uh, special meeting we had about this three weeks ago, um, at that meeting, Brad James attended and uh, uh, spoke about the issues he's had with the implementation of the new student longitudinal data database uh, system, the SLDS and the changes in the way that that uh, uh, manages um, equalized pupil count and assigning a, a, a students to the appropriate local education authority. Um, our budget that, that uh, the board built was built off the Agency uh, of Education's uh, figure they gave us in January of 179 pupils, pupils as, uh, as or right around when we were passing our budget, they decided that they wanted to change that number and drop it uh, close to, to 6%. What that, what that had an effect of, because now there's less kids to spread all that spending over, it raised the spending per kid, per kid so that added, added the first quarter million dollars thereabouts to, to our taxes. Uh, and then because that money was added and they said, well, you passed that budget, now you're in the penalty, so add another $150,000 of penalty to that. At that meeting, Brad James and uh, Tara, and we all agreed that what we needed to really do was to go back and look at a census of each of the last three years, because because the equalized people count is based on a two-year rolling average, we need to go back three years to get three years ago and two years ago for last year's uh, equalized pupils, and then get last year's and this year's for this one. So they sent us a file that Tara immediately distributed to the board um, of six different a, a worksheet with six different tabs on it. One for Stockbridge Fiscal 17, Roch uh, Rochester Fiscal 17, Stockbridge Fiscal 18, Rochester Fiscal 18, Stockbridge Fiscal 19, Rochester Fiscal 19. The student counts by town. 
we went through that list. There were some problems. There were, there were a number of kids that, that, that got missed, especially it seemed like in the Rochester, the last year that Rochester was officially a high school, but they were still tuitioning kids out. It seemed like there was a, a group of those kids that got missed. There were some Stockbridge kids that got missed. There were also some Pittsfield kids that were in, 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 incorrectly credited to us. So part of the effect of this audit and then this discovery that we're doing is going to change Pittsfield's tax rate because, you know, it's a zero sum game. The student has to go to, you know, town A or town B. Um, so we gave that all to the state. The state then pushed back and said, well, can you give us our, their dates of birth too? Then when we did that and they said, well, what's their enrollment date? We supplied that. Um, the, state has only, the state has only looked through the numbers of one of those six uh, uh, student censuses and they find that uh, there was about tw a 12 student variance seven had to come off and five had to be put or I'm sorry um, we, we we ended up with a plus five uh, to the count in Stockbridge we don't have that information for the other for, for the other five uh, census surveys from the from the state yet and the state has said that with Brad James Brad James being out of the office to the end of the month the state will not be giving us any answers until that time. At the last meeting, we said, well, the first thing is we think we're right. And so if you can, you know, if you can, uh, you know, so let's get the numbers right and let's keep our budget because we'll, we'll find the students will make that happen. That's not happening. The other two options we presented at that meeting were that we would, okay, we would never have put a budget forward and pretended it, it got beneath the penalty when it didn't. We would have done what we always do, which said, okay, here's the student count, here's the, 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 the revenue we're going to get, we're living within our means, here's the programs we're going to have, here's how many field trips we're going on, here's, you know, what kind of uh, uh, student supports we're, we can afford, so on and so forth. Um, so one of the options we put forward was, if this count is wrong, maybe we, maybe we just should redo the budget. So we have a budget that we can afford and th that our taxpayers can afford. With the state kicking the can down the road to, to, to the end of August, we would have to warn a meeting to, to redo a budget sometime in September, a, you know, weeks after the school was opening, when you can't, when you can't say, okay, by the way, there's no more, you know, <laughs> these field trips aren't happening, we're going to just lose our, 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 our deposit we made on them. You know, we're going to, uh, we, that we really don't think that's a viable option a, a, as a board anymore, which leaves us with the other option, which we're going to be talking about tonight, um, saying, you know, pointing out to the state that they had a legal obligation to give us that number uh, by the end of the year, by December 15th, and they didn't, and Brad James admitted that at the last meeting, that, yeah, so we're just getting the number right in May. Um, we feel that, that, that perhaps the, the, the best option going forward is going to be to say, we, we took your information, we put together a budget in good faith, we passed it in front of our voters and had conversations with our communities to accept a budget in, in, in good faith that had, you know, a 3%, 2.8, whatever our, our, our tax increase was. Our taxpayers agreed to pay that. And so that's, the, that's, that's where we need to, to take recourse. And if that requires an executive order, We'll, we'll ask for that. If that requires legislative action, you know, we'll reach out to Sandy and Allison and Alice and, 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 and Dick and, and, and say, you, you need to get this done because it's not fair. I mean, there's laws in Vermont that say that the warning has to have a, a, a specific paragraph that talks about the per cost per student so that we are transparent to our taxpayers about what that four some million dollars goes to. And, you know, because of the numbers, the, the bad numbers they gave us, the, the meeting we warned was illegal. The budget is, you know, isn't, isn't, isn't statutorily as transparent as it was supposed to be because we had bad information. So that is, is in, 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 in my mind at least, and what the board is going to be discussing, our best, our best cor course forward. You know, sort out the numbers on the back end. We can figure out ADM for next year, but we made an agreement with, 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 with the people of Stockbridge and then the people of Rochester that we're going to tax you this much and we're going to give you this much school. And to, to, to say, well, you know, we didn't give you good numbers, so sorry, is, is, is in our mind just unacceptable. We, we gave them a few weeks to try to go through and do this. We dropped, I mean, I personally spent, you know, I, I went to my regular job and then I came home and stared at a spreadsheet for a few evenings to go through and remember, you know, when, uh, uh, 
when uh, Marilyn Taggart's grandkid moved to Florida to remember, you know, oh whether or not, uh, uh, you know, whether or not Livy Merrill is, is still, I probably shouldn't be using uh, various students' names. <laughs> John, but, um, John but, Jane Doe. But, 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 you know, to, to understand Jane. when, you know, we, we've gone through and we've done our part and the state hasn't been able to, 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 to make it right. So I think that's the, 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 the best remedy going forward. So you're saying one person in the state, and, I, and I'm not yeah. you, but one person in the state of Vermont, and I'll say this to the camera, please do. Because he's on vacation, it's affecting 15, 1,600 people. It seems that he's and the only is, one who knows how to do and that this job. This is the time of year when schools are going back in, we're going through this, and so many schools are in the same problem. Yep. It's not acceptable, is it? No. no. We, when I spoke we don't to Sandy so. today, she did, one of the things she did say was that. She has been, uh, the whole legislature has been um, up in arms at the lack of people that are at, at the education department, that they just don't have the number of people that they need to do the job. Now, I don't know that, but. I, know, I, I totally agree with you. <laughs> when we had when we had our meeting three weeks ago, Bruce was on Bruce was on a, uh, a work. Uh, yeah, he was he was in Cambridge. He drove back. More importantly, training. Yeah, it was training. It was education. It was training. <laughs> but but it's the truth, right? So you know, this is big business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And, yeah. other, and the other thing we found, it seems that he's the only one who knows how to do that job for the Isn't entire state. Interesting. So that, you can't put yourself up on this pedestal. Right. And let's just say that the SU really tried to reach him for a very long time before this, and he never returned phone calls or emails. So that's a whole other issue. That's and apparently right. that's a pattern. And as I said to Sandy, we can't just solve this then. This is just one incident. Right. What happens when we have another problem? Can we expect the same reaction? Exactly. Well, I think, it, um, as uh, Bruce said, um, we, we might, it's quite possible we're not alone in the state. Well, that's what but I they're, they're, we're starting no, to hear it. In the bottom of the uh, Digger article, which is the 23rd of July, I believe, the one that has Brad James on the front yes. side. Uh, <laughs> the last paragraph talks about um, 28 towns as of Monday, according to officials in the Department of Taxes, 10 towns are still going through re, uh, reappraisal, but the majority of delays are related to uh, district mergers under Act 46. So I sent, I, I don't want to trump the agenda, but I, you asked a bunch of specific questions, and one of them was about trying to find out who in the state of Vermont is going through this with us. Um, and so I sent an email uh, this afternoon to uh, the uh, Superintendents Association. They have a listserv that they can put questions out to everybody. And um, they referred me back to this article. I said, yeah, I know this article. It features us. So <laughs> it's like, uh, I want to know who the, what the names of these towns are so that we can contact them. So Jeff Francis, of course, who's the head of that, uh, the organization, was on vacation. And, uh, but his <laughs> assistant did get it, did respond to me, asked me a couple questions, and they are going to put it out. So I just don't have the answers to which exact towns they are. But the purpose is to be able to talk to them about, is our problem your problem, or, or you know, whatever it is. So. Um, one, one of the things that I would say is that the impact on various towns is going to be very different, right? So if Burlington is missing nine kids in a count, which is, is what we're looking at here uh, specifically, is, is I think it's 9.3 mm -hmm. kids. If Burlington's missing 9.3 kids, the impact of Burlington is very different than it is for your towns. Um, so I, I am aware of that I do um, have school districts that did have variances, but they were within a threshold that didn't cause the same consternation that is happening here. Cheryl? Has the governor's office been made aware of the problem? Uh, we haven't done that yet. Well, we were waiting. We were waiting to, to, to get through and give the AOE its its its, its, its you know chance? its chance to respond like they said they would. Well, yeah. Well, no, yeah. actually, the Secretary of Education did respond to me today, uh, and 
uh, he kicked it to Donna Russo Savage, who's their attorney for, do you remember that name? Probably? Yeah. yeah. Yep. She, she responded to another one of Carl's questions and referred me to um, another uh, part when we were talking about that 5% mm -hmm. uh, issue. Which is that, yeah. What you well, I'm not sure it's right. It's, it's, Dina, why don't you respond to this according to what you read into this? So I looked at one, Act 153, Act 156, Act Can 156. we let them know what we're talking about with the 5%? Uh, the 5 per, it, there's 5%, there used to be a 5% hold harmless provision. Which Act, means Actually, just, was it the hold harmless or it was a merger 5% um, budget increase? <laughs> Because the whole harmless is different. There, there are a couple of different things. It, so there's, it was the cap of an increase or decrease of five percent. Of yeah. five percent, that existed in Act 153. Uh, it existed in Act 156. It existed in Act 46. Act 49 of 2017 um, modified that out. And part of what the issue is here, if I'm understanding uh, from the information that AOE provided prior to Donna being involved in mentioning Act 73 uh, is that you got your tax rates of your towns actually where they were equalized with each other. And that is uh, what impacted on your ability to, to be able to access the decrease increase. Um, Act 49 does contain a, a procedure of going to the secretary if there are increases and having the secretary um, take a look and see if the increases are quote unquote within the control of the school board. I think that it's very clear from your school board that they would not consider these increases to be within their control. They de dealt with one number and then had a finalized number some five months later than the statutory deadline, <coughs> which impacted everything and has started this problem. So that's part of the conversation uh, that the board, that Carl and I have had about, it, there are a lot of components in the sense of that I think the secretary has some power here to make a decision that, you know, they missed what their statutory deadline was in terms of giving you a final number. Um, they are reluctant, I will say, I, I've been in contact with them, they are reluctant to give me a sort of a heads up if they think it's going to be a positive change. Um, I, I can't necessarily fault them for that based upon what my role is. They, uh, you, you know, um, as, the, as the board's attorney, I can't, I can't fault them for being a little cagey maybe perhaps with me on that. Um, and I think they want to get it right. They want a, a number that is correct. But, you know, I think there's a lot of validity to the issue of that there is under the statute a deadline of December 15th. Uh, the deadline exists so that boards can build their budgets and that they know what they're going to be, um, you know, what numbers fit into their formulas and what their, their funding is going to be. And I think Carl is correct in what he says that, you know, there is a definitely within the law, and I'm sure Cheryl, you, you probably would agree with me, there's absolutely a philosophy of transparency to your voters about what your budget is and what the equalized pupil rate is going to be. It has to be on your warning. It tells you per kid um, so that people know what they're voting on because it impacts on, on everybody within your town um, who owns property. And it, and it is something which is a measure of knowing whether, whether or not expenses are going up or not going up. So. Um, you know, at this point, I think it's a, it's a two-pronged issue for me, which is that, uh, as Carl said, I don't believe that, that doing a, a revised budget, a brand new budget, and bringing that to the voters, I don't think that that necessarily is going to be the most efficient way of addressing this. I think there's a lot of ownership from AOE here. Um, Brad James at the last meeting, for those of you who were there may remember, he talked about he was on version 15 of... He also was talked about mistakes he had made. And he had made, he made know, some mistakes. There were some issues regarding public, about... Is as well he should. Hard to, hard to get sometimes. Right. And I mean, there were issues of um, also the merger support. Correct. There was an issue that he had to correct about what used to be known as the small schools grant. 
is now defined as a merger support. There's still provisions that deal with that. There were some mistakes within the calculation about that as well. That was by maybe it was designed to help specifically right. some of the schools here. Um, you talked about political options. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there legal remedies that are under consideration or could be under consideration? It seems to me that that's pretty clear cut that they didn't follow the law. Do you want me to answer? I do. <laughs> Which, which is always an uncomfortable issue for me to answer that because there, there, there obviously are conversations that the board and I have. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I'm comfortable in saying is that yes, your board is interested in anything which is going to move the dime here. Um, and and, and it, I'm, I'm struggling a little because I don't, I, you know, I understand people and their workloads and issues of, of that nature, and, and so I want to be respectful, generally speaking, of that. But there should be somebody who could be assisting us at this stage. I know and, Brad James. He's a nice, he's a nice guy. He did his job. I mean, I've worked with him. He's before. a very bright, very good There's guy. Nothing. And he should have somebody who yeah. who, who can actually do That's what he right. does as well. Um, I so yes, your board is considering every option. There are limitations, generally speaking, of how fast things like litigation. You have to be realistic about it, right? Yeah. You, you have a tax payment that has to come up in um, Thursday of next week for yeah. everybody. Um, in the short term, I've had a conversation with your board chair about, and your board is. Um, going to be doing this and very open about that, very open about it. One of your towns, I believe it's Rochester, please help me if I'm wrong, actually does assess interest if payments are late. Mm -hmm. Yes, Rochester. Yes, it is. Stockbridge doesn't do that until November, I believe. But right. Um, your board chair is going to be discuss discussing that with the Rochester Select Board as an interim, a short term sort of, let's make sure that people aren't penalized and have the accrual of interest. We're going to request that they don't have the uh, accrual of interest while we're trying to figure out what this is, if people have a hardship issue. Um, I want to be very clear. I can't advise anybody not to pay what their tax bill is. It's an individual choice. I'm not making any recommendation legally about the lights. Uh, uh, the yeah, lights are the lights. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the lights are, oh. the lights are going off. Well, <laughs> you know, we've, we've got <laughs> no tax money, money flowing. Yeah, yeah, right. um, <laughs> so that's a short term, I think. Um, disappointed more than I can explain to you about being told that the answer won't be given to us until the 24th. At the earliest? At the earliest. I think that um, your board is still putting pressure about um, that this should be a priority for the part of the AOE that deals with this issue. Uh, I think it's been very clear with me that there still should be pressure as well. Um, so that's the short term, but in terms of generally speaking, your board is considering every option that it possibly can do. I, I will say this though, I, the reality is to be very blunt and I want to be very transparent, even if your board uh, felt that there were grounds and there was a reason to sue, relief from that isn't going to happen before the end of August either, right? right? Um, and, and, and so that's also, and that's also an expense for your town too, right? For your town, I should say. So it's doing it thoughtfully, still being responsible and putting what the appropriate pressure is, I think. I think there's a, a lot of value to, to continuing the conversations with your legislator. Um, very disappointed. But can't have that conversation directly with you right now, Charles, <laughs> so, um, about that because I think that's going to be part of it. I, I really think that that has to be an area of where your local representatives, and, and they've been very willing um, and very engaged, I, I, I believe, in, in, in inquiries from the board about putting some pressure on um, Sandy Haas, am I saying mm -hmm. her last name correctly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely took it upon herself to call AOE and also inquire and put pressure on there. And I think that that's beneficial too. You guys should call too. Mm -hmm. should. I'll call me back. <laughs> 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 yeah, you're much kinder. 
to them than I would be as far as getting the governor involved. Well, I think that that's a valid point in that the governor, I, you know, I, I would hate to think that somebody on the governor's really? staff isn't somewhat aware of it through the yeah, bigger issue, but I, I agree with you. I think, I think, I'll just I think that it's... Yeah, I think that it's absolutely one of the ways, and and you have, we have a very responsive government, right? I mean, that's I, I hope so. That's part of yeah. uh, a Vermont train. Find that. Yeah, it's a Vermont train. <laughs> we 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 certainly will. Did no, you I, say I the hotline, Cheryl. Is that what you said? Governor's hotline. Yes. 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 Governor's action. Yeah. So if all this works out positively, I'm hoping that it does, mm. and they say, "Yep, we made a mistake. We're going to change it. Your numbers are going to change." Um, and we have to cut back a little bit because I know that we were at 10 percent increase in the spring when we voted. Is that correct? No, no, we voted. It was at 2.3 or 3 percent or 3 percent overall. Okay. So, but if say we have to back it up a little bit so they don't give us everything back because it wasn't the total 14 students that we were behind. Right. It's less. So would you as a board um, look at the, the budget and maybe modify it a little bit if it's a field trip? We'll do some more fundraising or whatever. Like, are you we would. I, I think that I think that if we got if if we got a response that was close, you know, that, that got us, you under know, cap, in in in, in certainly under the we we, we I, obviously the penalty the penalty is a no a no brainer. Right. And if it's if it's you know instead of being nine some students, it's two, right. and it it, it moves right. the tax rate by by three or four cents. Right. That's 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 a different conversation well, then than sure, and when we would be, I mean, obviously, the other piece is that um, so the way they change the phantom student law is that you don't you don't get to keep building them. You 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 can only drop that 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 three percent or three and a half percent in a year, but the next year. You're, you're, you start with your actual count again, and you can only drop that. So it's obviously going to, if, if, if we did come down a few kids, it would affect where we, where we could possibly end up uh, the year before, and that would, would, would obviously you know, uh, affect the overall conversations. Because we've always been very, very, you know, we've always found that it's been very important to our, 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 our towns that we are, we are under the penalty, and we are, we are keeping you know, we're, 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 not, we're not having a, 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 a you know, an 8% raise or a 9% raise because no one gets that kind of, that kind of increase to their, to their income, right. you know? Exactly. We, we have, we are very well aware that we have a number of, of, of our people on fixed income. And yes, there's income sensitivity, but that only, you know, that only counts for the homestead part of your property. And it's not, you know, it, it, it's not fair to try to, to, to try to game the system and say, well, everyone's income sensitive, so who cares what the real number is? Right. That's not, you know, that, that's not ever been our approach, and that's not. I've always been very careful, Carl, about that. And so that's why I wanted to ask the question. Well, if you felt that that's something that you will look at. May I follow up on that? Um, sort of black and white. As things go right now, we can open the schools. We can have kids coming into the school, right? And we will have money to pay for them. Okay. Um, if we have to do this adjustment of incremental, hopefully it's you know seven to nine or something like that that they come back with. Or, um, but if it's more than that, uh, legally. How do we, is that up to the administrators to say, okay, boom, we've you got have, to look. You, you have fixed costs that are within your budget that you're not going to um, be changing, right? You've got health care costs, you've yep. got salaries. salaries. And that's actually, quite frankly, a large part of every school district's mm -hmm. budget. Um, I think it's being fiscally prudent within your budget and within what your spending is. Mm -hmm. um, it is going to be things more than likely, I would assume, about uh, Extra programming, extra, extra programming issues. Um, you know, the field trip issues that, that, that were brought up. So mm -hmm. there's a way to do that. Now, I, I have to say this: not every school district spends exactly what its budget is every year, anyhow, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, because you hope to, that, and and I think you have a pretty good track record with your administrators of being fiscally prudent about mm -hmm. that. Um, in some districts, because of variances, uh, you know, people move in, you know, issues happen that impact on 
on your school some do deficit spending as it is. Uh, so you do have the ability to open your schools. You are going to have tax revenue to some degree, or hopefully all of the tax revenue, um, with people understanding that if there is an adjustment, it would be on their second payment. Um, you're going to I believe, I don't know if you've already gotten authorization, you probably did it at your annual meeting, I would hope for a tax anticipation. They're available and we're available yes. on They're July available as tax anticipation notes, which schools use in the regular course of business, yep. not just in these situations, yep. obviously. Um, so yes, you'll be able to open your school, and I think it's just being very cautious about what you're spending. Your money. Right. Well, that's and and you know that's I think part of the reason to add to, to to add those couple uh, action points to make sure that you know I I don't think the board has any interest in trying to hold back you know people's paychecks or paying you know the the, the phone bill or, or or things like that, but. I think you know until we really know what's going on, we should probably hold off writing some of the bigger tuition checks for now. Hold off on writing a, the you know the the, the SU uh, the, the first big SU central office payment until we understand <laughs> where we're where uh, our, our money's coming from and what we're getting. Because if we don't have a budget and we have we say okay we can't do this, we're going to not we're we're not going to spend towards this budget because we don't accept the penalty. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. The law, as I understand it, if you do, if you go into a school year without a budget, you get 90% of your last year's budget or 80%? It, it's 87%. 87%. You, you actually, in oh. fact, legally have a tax budget, um, you know, right now. So well, we sort of. So you, 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 you do have a budget that the voters did vote on, which passed. That was illegally passed, warned. Whether, whether or not it, there, are, are there are grounds for taking a look and doing a new budget is, is one of the conversations that we Right, right. But again, I think that, you know, understanding that one of the one of the, the, the worst case scenarios is that we may only get 80 percent of, of our last year's fund, 87 percent of our last year's funding. So being understanding that we have to make the pay, we have to first pay the bills that have the schools open and pay our teachers and then put put food in the cafeteria and put gas in the you know put diesel in the bus. Um, you know, so the, the you know it's it's not a matter I think of uh, Senator. Good to see you, sir. Have a seat. Thank you for coming. Um, it's not a matter of, uh, of, of trying to be punitive or saying, well, we're not going to write checks to anyone until they give us our money. It's a matter of being, you know, of prioritizing our local children and the schools that are right here and just down the road 11 miles and making sure that they have the resources that, 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 that they need to open. Cheryl, is this, I just, if I may, is this giving you the information you need to talk to people back in the community that are talking to you? Um, is this answering some of your questions? It's, it's very helpful. Okay. Of course, you know, it's, we don't have an answer, though. As you said, no sunshine yet. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I think in the, to the best that you can, the, the best of your ability, um, it would be really good to plan with good notice mm -hmm. a, a public meeting so people have a chance because mm -hmm. otherwise, rumors fly, yeah. mm -hmm. blame is assigned, and the truth uh, gets lost, Wh whatever that might be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I think it's very important. I'll, I'll tell you, um, my property taxes are going up $1,500. Um, and, um, you know, that doesn't... I, that bothers me, but it doesn't bother me as much as what I've heard from you about the state doing what it did, because the legislature clearly intended that you have that information when you need it, so that when the budget is voted on, mm -hmm. the facts are correct. Mm -hmm. They didn't do it. It's clear cut to me. They didn't do it. They should take what we have, hold us harmless, and another year we may have it sounds to me like another year we're going to have to face some austerity um, if our, yes. if yeah. our pupil, pupil count stays down. Um, but uh, to me, it's not acceptable that we don't know, we don't, we can't get the information. Correct. Which and, is why and, I said and this is beyond the Department of Education. The governor needs to know about it. Yeah. Well, and, and you I'm know, all for considering legal options. I wouldn't mess around. I mean, I know you have to be diplomatic, but this is pretty serious, and not everyone 
is going to take the time to understand that it's a need to yes. respond. Well, when it, it, it was one thing to sit in a meeting with Brad and have and have him say we're going to get on this, we're going to we're going to sort this out. Three weeks later, to be told, well, we didn't get it sorted out. I'm I'm, I'm going away. I'll, I'll be back in the office end of the month. We'll talk about it then. You know, and, and talk to your select board about maybe they can waive the waive the waive the interest penalty. So, you know that when you know when when the ball gets punted like that, we really have to rethink. What we're doing and, and how much how, how much pressure we're we're putting on because you know we can't uh, you you can't I mean even if even if the you know so the next Rochester Select Board meeting is Monday I'll be there even if Dune and, and company say okay yeah you're right we're still telling people we're we're still faced with trying to get the word out with three days with 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 three days notice right. and it's not it's not fair to you it's not fair to the staff of the school. Not fair to anybody. Yeah. And you know that's a shame. And I appreciate the fact that it's pretty pretty stressful on the staff and on the board. But it's also stressful on the community. Yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah, Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. I just wanted to remind you that those those special ed assessments, all those people in your building that are special ed, special ed paras, occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, they're paid for. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, um, if assessments aren't paid, then that means you, you want to pay the local people. Well, I want to make sure that the people that are paid from the SU office, which is a, a large number of people, because they serve sure. your building, all the buildings, just to make sure that we have the cash flow to be able to pay them. As well. Sure. No, and that's I, I I understand that, and and hopefully that's 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 not going to be an impact. It's just hard for us to think about writing, you know, and, and maybe we'll work out of uh, paying some of it uh, now. But again, when we're not sure what we're going to be getting uh, in, in in terms of funding from the state to uh, to do anything that doesn't absolutely need to be paid is is is, is I think. You know, uh, prudent for us, and I certainly understand that you don't that have that. Two separate people working in the building, and one get paid and one not. Sure, paid. sure, separate. and you know, hopefully, uh, I mean, at various times, other towns have been late paying assessments, and hopefully, uh, you know, there's there's enough to at least get that first round of checks out. But it's hard. Again, it's 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 hard to say we're just going to keep writing checks like everything's going to be like everything is going to be fine. We can't assume everything's going to be fine. We have to. At least, you know, at least in the short term, hold back and really, really think about what we're doing, and that includes not just paying the SU assessment. That includes, you know, as the bills, you know, come in from the Sharon Academy, from Windsor Central, from from Randolph, and and, and from the other other things, saying, you know, what we may need to we you may need to wait, you know, more than 30 days to get to get paid on that, and that is also a function of 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 the state. You know, the state needs to. To, to, to sort out where we are and what we're going to get. And we, if we, absent their guidance, it'd be foolish, I think, of us to just assume that, that, that everything's going to go, going to, to, to turn up sunshine and roses. And I'm not advocating that. I just want to make sure that. Yeah, no, I, I understand that, 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 that part of that assessment pays, pays all your workers. It pays you. It pays Bruce. It pays Tara. I'm well, I'm, I'm well aware of that. The big piece is just that that's just a very large piece of money, and if we're putting that on a tax anticipation note without knowing when the revenues are coming in, that's like that's like putting the Disney World vacation on the credit card, um, because we are paying. Yeah, we could write that check; it comes out of the tax, you know, the the, the, the tax anticipation note. Um, but at the same time, that interest, if that interest is going to be accruing for a longer period, because we're at loggerheads with the state on funding, that's not necessarily the the, the fairest thing to do the, to, to the taxpayers either. So. Would it be profitable? Um, at this juncture because we haven't spent any of the budget other than a couple little things in supplies and things uh, that Bonnie and Lindy go through an exercise of uh, belt tightening in case we need it um, now uh, with the hope that we don't have to ever do it but that maybe there should be uh, a thought about how we might look at things uh, and I'm asking all of you this I don't well, would know. that change um, the taxpayers uh, tax bill though no no, no, they, no that's they, not what we're talking about we're it's talking anticipation about just what if Uncertainty. This something sense. happens and, and better to be prepared well, because we had a, a budget that was within our means that that was only a two two and a half percent increase so if we stick to that budget and 
the extra came from the state. Joanne? Joanne? Are we writing any checks at this point for the addition or the change of the high school building? So no, no the only the only check that the only check that that, that uh, uh, was written for that was for the the uh, assessment. The study. The study. How, how much is that? It came from the Dandelion. You guys authorized that money to come right. from the Dandelion daycare sale, yeah. so it right. did not. It was, it was uh, in the that was forty budget. some thousand dollars. Nope. It, was, it, was, it was it was out of the budget. Dandelion daycare. Was the uh, was a reserve? There was money left over from that sale, and that so that paid for the, um, for the, the engineering study, study for the, the whole engineering study, I believe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, because again, we had you know the neither school had real real uh, uh, working blueprints, you know, real analysis of the the, 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 the systems and the structures. Are we going to put the next step on hold till we get this straightened out? I think we're putting most. I mean, we're putting most yeah. everything on, on hold until yeah. until it gets straightened. No, no, no. It, it is. We're not. I, I, I. And you know, speaking to Cheryl's point about, uh, you know, about a big a big meeting. We had been talking about having a big meeting just to go over that that engineering assessment and to talk about some of those options. And there is no there is no way that we could hold that meeting and get people to come into it with an open mind. At, at this time, no. so the you know the the, the biggest thing to, to to you know we're not going to get good input from people in terms of discussing which building to be in in Rochester and right. what would happen in Stockbridge and Plus, so on and so I forth. I think it's also prudent to find out how many kids in October. Yeah. The real count now, mm -hmm. because I know that there are some kids leaving, maybe coming in also, but there's some kids leaving Stockbridge. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so it, that really is going to make a difference. Mm -hmm. For the numbers again, right. mm -hmm. absolutely, and I mean I think it's important to, you know, look at the trends and, and and look at that and not necessarily always be, you know, holding off because of what might happen, you know, uh, the next the you know the next uh, school cycle. Um, we have, you know, we we need to figure out. We have way too much. Uh, 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 square footage in Rochester, for example, we need to figure out what we're doing with that and. You know that conversation needs to be had. I think where people are calm and and, and confident and, and they have trust in their leadership. And right now there is absolutely no trust. I mean, I'm surprised I don't get thrown. You know, tomatoes don't get thrown at me on Route 100 as I drive by. People understand but, that you but were there's given the right information. Yeah, no, but I mean at the same time they can't. We need them. We need them to feel comfortable and and and, and, and trust what's going on so we can have an open and and and. Yeah. planful conversation that's not going to be a, a knee-jerk one because if everyone's angry I'm not I mean it's gonna be hard enough to have that conversation about about uh, space utilization in Rochester and Stockbridge if everyone's in a good mood yeah people in Stockbridge will freak out mm -hmm. yes so it's 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 definitely not the time to be having that conversation Absolutely. but that's also one of the reasons to bring an urgency to this matter because yeah. we can't if we don't if we hold off having that conversation you know till you know till we, we need to we need to have an idea of what we're going to do and what we're going to put into the budget for next year right. to think about those buildings otherwise right. we sit there and we say okay we'll you know keep that building heated yeah, at, at 60 there. degrees right. for another year yeah. Yeah. versus 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 right but we can't we can't we can't physically shut it down till we, till we decide that we're done with that I want her staff to get paid <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that you know, getting getting resolution to this and then moving into that is is is, is what the board would like so to that's do. Your promise. Is that my promise that we're not going to that we're not going to talk about anything. the building? So yeah. we'll try as hard as we can. Yeah. yeah. Um, can I ask Dana to clarify a little bit more about the five percent cap? Because that really confuses me. Because as we were doing all of these discussions about merging. Uh, yeah. It was really presented to us by David, I think it was as that this five percent cap that we would have this as a merger incentive that for the first five, I think it was four years, four years until we were done with the, the eight cents, six cents, you know, <laughs> reductions, that we would be protected that the um, tax rate could not fluctuate either way by more than five percent. Mm -hmm. And you named some different acts, and then you said it changed in Act 49, which was in 2017, which was when we voted on our, our um, 
when we voted on the merger. It was, it was one for November of 2017. And as Lindy just said, we never, I never even heard of these acts. Some yeah. of these acts that adjusted things that we were presented as a so very clear-cut issue. Yeah. So when the state first came out, it, um, I want to make sure I get this right. So when the state first came out, it was Act 153 of 2010 was the first time that the state started talking about. At that point in time, they called them regional reds. They were the reds. Mm -hmm. um, then Act 156 was in 2012. Those both contained. Uh, what you're talking about, which is the the, the not shifting mm -hmm. more than five percent up or not. Um, so the Act um, 49 came after Act 46. Act 46 contained the five percent provision okay. as well. Um, and I can tell you because it was the last one you said that it was said that, yeah. that and I remember Act 49 happened. Yeah, right. So I think it was in section 22 uh, of Act 46 or Act 49. Sorry, it was uh, section six of Act 46 talks about the five percent. Right. It also talks about what they call the merger support, which used to be small considered the small, small schools school. grant. Right. right. Um, Act 46 also talks about uh, Carl has hit the 96 and a half percent of the actual equalized people. Right, the equalized people, yep. Right, and so then you get to Act 49, Section 29C, and it's calculation of tax rates for member towns and voluntary school governance mergers, which is what you all did. And it says calculation of certain rates, 5% hold harmless rule. And it talks about uh, the extent to which the increase in education and spending for equalized people is caused by declining enrollment in the union school district, the extent to which the increase is uh, per equalized people is caused by unifying employee contracts, which did not happen. But they're talking about hold harmless. That's different from this 5% cap. They're talking about equalized pupils. Where they're talking this about the moving up and down of the 5%. That's the In same. relation to the equalized pupils. Mm -hmm. No, they're talking about on your tax rate. So it, it, they're, they're referring back to when they say your tax rate, they're talking about that 5% increase and mm -hmm. the 5% decrease. And so in other words, Act 46 has language in it in Section 6 uh, that talks about um, that a town will not have either a decrease or an increase of 5%, right? In taxes. And not it's, in it's in the home, in the home right, tax rate, correct? It's just when you read that, you said equal, it was start talking about equalized pupils, and that's why I was feeling because that it was getting. Using, they use your equalized pupil to determine your, your equalized homestead tax rate. It's part of the, the formula. For so the they're home. going back to the equalized pupils and talking about 5% on the equalized pupils? No, they're talking about 5% on the tax rate reduction, which would be your homestead tax. Right, right. Okay. But Brad, last meeting, Brad made a very clear point that like we'd reached some yes. equilibrium right. where it didn't count. Where, where, where both of your towns, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Both of your towns when did the same tax rate. And Act 49 came out in But that had nothing to do with how budget going up right or down. It was right when so failed failed. 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 Because were we given the incorrect information to begin with? Yeah. But, yeah I, I think, I it was, I think it's really it shady like of the state what they did. Because yeah. in Act 46, they saw that you couldn't go below. Yeah. You, couldn't, you couldn't have an increase above 5%. They said you get to hold, you know, you got your small schools grant. These are the reasons that were some of the major components of why we chose to unify. Because of those were protections. And I find it very yeah. disheartening to find out that in here. Act 49, which passed after Act 46, that they took that one provision away, which was a major carrot, which it was an entire carrot in the stick. And I just find it extremely frustrating. That's over and over again. And we thought, because it was presented to us, is that, and that's why it's so, when he starts talking about equilibrium, which is a word we'd never even heard before, it was really frustrating. It's shading. Yeah, again, it's like, how many things are happening that are not getting communicated. Got them right okay, here. anyway, we should have one conversation here. I'm sorry. So there no, also I'm is language in, and, and I have to look at it, and um, and I didn't uh, recognize that there was language in Act 73 as well, which talks about um, this, there's a commission of, or a committee of superintendents and the secretary of education taking, uh, doing, again, with a budget, taking a look at and seeing whether or not it's in the control of the school that 
why your why your budget went up a certain amount. I am not comfortable speaking to whether or not that's in effect right now because I haven't gone through X X seventy three to to make sure that what was sent to us from somebody Don, trying to give us so information was very quickly. She was trying to give it to us very quickly mm -hmm. um, of whether or not that's a that's a. So fair this is. But th th I just want to make it clear that this is. Uh, along with missing the f December 15th date, not getting back to our SU after we found or first heard about this rate increase. This is another thing that we as a school board were not informed that this 5% had a completely different meaning and a, and by the a, Board of Ed. He, and the, apparently it was in, it was passed before in June. We didn't vote on it until November. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we were given incorrect information. Yeah, we were, again, we were given again. incorrect information we, by we the. We need to double check that. So yeah. I'll triple check that because um, it's confusing. Yeah. And it, it is. It, 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 but, it's, but it's just totally new language that we had never heard until the last meeting. Deb? Um, the part of it is, is I just want to make sure that you understand. I'm sorry, Deb. Okay. Is part of it is is that you ha you have to understand you did get the benefits of the tax incentives for one year. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, the eight, eight cents. Well, we're still at the eight six. That's where we're still at. But uh, we're all under yeah. the, the understanding that we would still have this extra provision for four years for the, for the entire. I mean, in the model one days, that was touted left and right. Yo, we'll get to keep our hold harmless. We'll get that five percent cap. And it just, I just, I mean, I understand like laws get passed, but I think it was extremely irresponsible and dishonest of the state to pass something when they were doing such a major consolidation of all these small schools to pull something like that out of, from the rug from us. It's just yep. irresponsible. So on the AOE website, there is a governance timeline with criteria, incentives, and protections. It's posted. It's according to the Agency of Education. It's current. And it says that it was approved by the electorate July 1st, 2016, operational J July 1st, 2017. And under um, the reds and red variations, it says incentives protections include option one of the following, the homestead property tax rate reduction during the first four years with the money, income payers percentage adjusted accordingly, which is the income sensitivity. Right. And it says member towns rate cannot increase or decrease by greater than 5%. And then in italics after, and I don't know what the italics means, like maybe it was added after, it says until at unified rate. Do you raise your unified rate quickly? Yeah, and he said last year you hit the unified rate, which you did because it's not your tax rate that it's the equalized pupil rate is what they're looking at because then the CLA is added which gives you your school tax rate. So those bottom were two different because the CLA in both towns are different. Right. But it's that first unified tax rate, mm -hmm. the equalized was the same. You guys hit it last year. And so that's why he said, that's why he said once you hit it. Well, the, the calculations yeah. in the budget force it to be the same. Uh, in some of the towns, it's more gradual coming right. together because they're... Well, they, they run two different budgets a for a while? There's disparity in some towns yeah, between yeah, it, and it's just... Tax rate it, was it's done. So it's not that dramatic. Okay. Right. okay, well, okay. okay. I think, well, uh, we obviously, we still need yeah. to get more understanding of, of, of that particular aspect of things. You know, why the italics is there, because I don't know why that little phrase is italicized. Right, and uh, I don't want us to get too far, too far into the weeds about... Yeah. Thank you. About, yeah, about this particular, the, this particular facet of it, I think, no, the, you know, going back to the to, to, to the big picture, we need to, you know, we need to move with a quickness to get some certainty to to our taxpayers, so they know, you know, what they're going to be able to spend, what they're, you know, what what they what they owe for for, for their education tax. Joanne. Well, I know at the meeting in Stockbridge is pretty. I was meeting office meeting. Deal was the affair, and he didn't have an asterisk to that. And he said, This is the way to go. This town should merge because you're guaranteed. Mm -hmm. It won't go up, it won't go down, but you're guaranteed you're safe, and you're not going to be safe unless you merge. Yep. And that, I think, solidified many people's decisions, at least in our town. Mm -hmm. I believe that. And maybe he should come to the next meeting as well. So, so if I can actually respond to that, 
When he said that to you, that's what the law was. That was what? When he said that to you, that is what the law was. In November of 17. I'm sorry. It was. Oh, he said it. Yeah, it he was only came on board June with us. June 2000. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I this was, was a very good. late breaking process here. You know, yeah, we were it was late. August okay, when we I'm got. Sorry, I thought he had done it prior no. to that. Okay. It was in August when we first started talking. Right. I do believe so. It's from right. August to November we created a, a merger. And then we got the handout in November of 2017 that said these are the bullet points. And this is the mm -hmm. one of the things that you, you know, you will get if you okay. merge. I thought it was earlier. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, there was, I mean, there, there were fits and starts. Rochester was in a lot of merger conversations, right. you know, through the, through the process. Um, may I ask our esteemed <laughs> senator? Um, some of the issues we're dealing with, I know you didn't, might not have heard all of this, but some of the things we're dealing with about particularly the AOE missing this December 15th deadline for the, the, uh, the number that we were counting on, and then it changed 15 times before they, without any notice, dumped it into our tax bill. And then when our SU tried to get back to them for two months, stonewalled or didn't get back to them. Um, this is a very serious issue for us. Um, well, can you speak to it? First percent. I am not here to speak for, explain, or defend. <laughs> it's a good thing I, to start with. I mean, a legislator is not, my job is not to speak for the state. Yep. Yep. My job is to speak to the state Great. Yep. for you. That's why we're just and, making sure of these also, issues. Also, I, I have voted against Act 46 because of the possibility of stuff. I, I take no pleasure to yeah. In saying that, I told you so to my colleagues. My sense was once it was the law, I was hoping it would work well. And I was aware of the shocking tax increase in, in, in Stockbridge, but I was also the last I knew that AOE had conjectured it's probably a clerical error will take care of it. Mm -hmm. And it was only until the last couple of days that I become aware that that has not happened. Great. We're so not so reassured. So, sorry. So I, I've come this evening really to, to, to get informed. I, this will be my first work tomorrow morning. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at, at the very least, you're entitled to a timely and accurate answer. I mean, that's yeah. at the very least that, and then probably you know, to a better answer. This, does um, Knight, right, the Secretary of Education, is that his name? Dan French. Dan French. French, French Knight, something like that, yeah. Um, <laughs> can, I mean, can he, is there a magic wand? I mean, I don't know who answers this, but is there a magic wand that even when the man we want is off on vacation, he can say, you're okay? He's, I, I will tell you this, that, um, Senator, so that you're also aware of it, uh, and I'm sure you're okay with me, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, he, he has been reluctant to uh, provide any information other than the fact that the timeline that Brad um, provided us regarding his being out of the office and coming back and, and dealing with it is, is the last information that we had uh, regarding the timeline. Uh, so can he wave a wand? I think he controls the state agency, and if he's got people who can do the work, would be my statement that they could be doing the work. But it is with two people within that department right now who are still going through, as Carl talked about at the beginning of the meeting, the remainder of your fiscal years for both, both sets of schools. So there were six spreadsheets they're going through. Um, they were unavailable today. They've been unavailable the last last week for several days, and, and today and yesterday because they are out in the public doing the SLDS training for schools, right. for our data people and administrative assistants. Right. So the two people who are the yes. ones that do this are also the two people that are training everybody else how to utilize the system and how this information gets uploaded from our individual schools Right. through the data files to the state longitude system. But I, meanwhile, they've been, out, they've been out of touch with us, correct? They've dropped, they've, they've, they've put Jennifer, aside our, pro, our project. Jennifer, 
is her name. She has communicated with me that exact thing that they were, what Brad confirmed this morning was that they were out and right. doing these trainings. Yeah, John, I, I communicate with Dan French at the end of the day today and he passed me over. I said, certainly there's somebody else I could talk to because Brad's on vacation and I'm getting those notices. Uh, he passed me off to Donna Russo Savage and she gave me a response. We're not sure it's the correct response. Uh, after talking with Dina, I just don't know. Uh, but she was referring to um, unified union districts, and that's not what we are. Uh, so, but he did at least try to get me an answer this afternoon. So knowing that I was going to come to this meeting and have to uh, talk about it, uh, I think the the overarching part of this is that there is a lot of shorthandedness in the agency that's certainly Brad needs help <laughs> you know if we're going to get served uh, but that's a bigger bigger fish to fry I guess but again I, I think I want to go back to Ethan's question about the magic wand because the question I have is who if anyone has the authority to say does the commissioner of education mm -hmm. have the authority to say we made a mistake and we are going to go and let you go with what you have because it's our mistake and we don't and we've got have the money costs and you don't want to have it's not like we're holding the money we'll go. that's what should happen yeah. right away the I, if the commissioner has that authority yeah, he has. i don't know if he has that authority pardon, pardon we me? need to find out if he does yes we need to know if any and this is where dick from the yeah. governor you could that's a very valid question for you to ask yeah. That's part, a good question. I'll, I'll ask it. Part, part of that may be that he, in fact, exercises some discretion, and you and your colleagues have to bless it. Gotcha. Have to bless it after the fact. It may be part of the resolution to that. Um, and I, th I think that's sort of where we're trying to see if that's what that, that right. process is. Just before you came in, we had, I had been uh, going over. So when we had, uh, when we found out about this on the 16th when the town clerks called the board and said these tax bills, they ain't right. Um, we had a meeting uh, the, the following week that Brad James attended and we discussed the problem. He pointed out that uh, there were problems with the SLDS implementation, the student count. He's trying to make the numbers right. We offered and did sit down with him to go over uh, year by year, student by student, the individual census. I think we think part of the confusion is that we tuition the seventh through twelfth graders, so the state is trying to c collect information and assign Woodstock kids to our district and Sharon Academy kids to our district and Randolph kids and and you know Middlebury kids now and Harwood kids because our catchment is huge. We send kids all over the state, um, and that we had that so that absent. That, that number not being right, we had, our point had been, you know, the new tax, the part of the new tax bill that, that makes it jump so high is that by spreading our budget over, over fewer students, it pushes us into the penalty. $150,000 of the $400,000 tax increase is penalty dollars. Um, we had said, well, we never would have, if that had been the number, we never would have made a budget that spent that much money. We've always lived within our means. And you know, could we, if, if we had to, we would we would consider redoing a budget. At this point, with the fact that we're not going to have a number till school is basically in session, yeah. we really can't. The the idea of trying to redo a budget, putting getting something warned, getting something that's accurate and and properly spends the taxpayer dollars when school has already started, is an impossibility. So what we're what we're thinking our best recourse is is to say we you gave us state in, you know the state gave us information AOE gave us numbers uh, that they said were our our, our uh, equalized pupil count uh, in January we used their number we did not transpose a digit or or uh, uh, come up with a different number in our office we used the state's number we built a good faith budget we warned it with the transparent language about how much it costs per student so on and so forth we got we, we explained it to our taxpayers we sold them what we thought was a 2.7 2.8 percent increase and they passed it and in our minds we put forth a good faith budget and we really can't start and do business of educating kids and still have this over our heads. So that's where we're talking about figuring out if Dan French can wave that magic wand or if the governor can wave that executive order magic wand or if it needs to be something that's, that's put together as, as, as part of a legislative blessing to, 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 to make that, that budget go forward. But in our minds, that's the cleanest, simplest, 
you know, we, 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 we got information from the state, we built a budget, we warned that budget, we presented it to our townspayers, we passed that budget, sir. And that's, that's, that's the remedy that we think is the, is the most, is, 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 is the cleanest way forward. And I, I think the other thing I'd add to that is just that I think all of us feel, uh, we feel pretty small right now, Dick. You know, just like, we're just this tiny little school district in the middle, and here they are off training other school districts rather than dealing with us. And if you can make some, enough noise there to make us feel a little bigger, because it's just, it's really appalling that these people are going off on vacation or not dealing with our problem, because it's like educating our kids. It's like bottom line. It just, yeah, it just feels like they're neglecting what it, the, what it means to live around here. I mean, we don't have the populations. We don't have the money that Montpelier has, and they need to get out of Montpelier a little more often to understand what it's like to have this happen to them, because this is just, it's, it's unacceptable. Uh, and, and everyone has a right to take a vacation, but if you're at the park, you're supposed to leave a subordinate in charge mm -hmm. to hold down the fort while you're gone. Mm -hmm. So the fact that someone stays on vacation is not an excuse. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, well, I think I've got my marching orders. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make some noise. Please. Absolutely. Does anyone else have any other, other comments or, or things they want to put on the pub public record before we go on to the uh, rest of the agenda or if we hopefully answered? Everyone's uh, uh, idea. As I said, I'll be at the Rochester uh, uh, town clerks meeting or the select board meeting uh, next Monday to uh, talk to them about uh, uh, waiving or alleviating any kind of interest uh, or late fee payments uh, in, in this situation. And as we said, Stockbridge already has had a policy of not charging late fees till after the, the second payment in November. And hopefully we can figure out and get the word out to, to everybody. And that's where Cheryl, Joanne, we can all use the help when we get some information. If we reach out to you, if you can help us beat the bushes and get that out into the, the, the corners of our towns, that, that'd be great. And I know you know how to do that in this town. I know a little bit about it. <laughs> so. And thank you very much for coming. We and appreciate And for your reasonableness, that. too. I appreciate that. All right. Um, moving, uh, moving forward, uh, we have a consent agenda about the uh, uh, Friday, uh, August 2nd uh, meeting minutes. I don't see the minutes. We don't have them, no. Jenny just wanted me to pass it on. Oh, thank you. I didn't see any minutes come around. Okay, so no. we'll, we'll table that till, till our next, yeah, uh, she is. Our, our, our next time. Um, do we have, I mean, I know the principals and the, and the superintendents just reported to the business manager. Well, you weren't. You weren't at our, at our you meeting. You missed before, our right? retreat. So, but, I but wasn't we have. Invited. Oh. We had. Uh, so we, we had reports from the. I, I, I'm assuming yeah. you guys have nothing more to. Yeah, we're done yeah. with Dina. Yeah. 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 We're done with there, Dina. We're okay. still in meeting. Are, are you okay if I vacate the premises? Absolutely. Do you have anything else you want to talk to me about for a minute, or are you good? I or we can talk later. I'm good, and I think we'll catch up. Right? Beautiful. All right, thank you. No, thank you, not a problem. Thank you. Drive safe yeah. back. Thank you for coming. Oh, are you coming forward? Sorry. Um, oh, are these books? Those are your FY18 final audits. Audit of the school. school. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right. School yeah. audits, okay. And I'm sorry, can I, there, can I have Rochester your name? I just, uh, I usually put an attendance down. I just, you know, your name. Walter. Walter. Murdoch. M-E-R-D-A-K. M-E-R-D-A-K. Okay. Yeah, so one's Rochester and one's Stockbridge. Okay. And I'm sorry, what's your name? Yeah, yeah so okay, I was like, she was kind of familiar. Right. Okay. And we have, we have at the, both Thank at the, 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 the school's principal office yeah. and at the SU office, we have, we're, we are, we are uh, independently and professionally audited uh, every year, so there's we have years back. If you're curious to to really really do some some uh, uh, light reading of of, uh, uh, of our of our finances. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. No worries. Uh, I was going to say that I Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Information okay. on the treasurer. Ah, yes. Uh, that is there, and I passed them all around. So does anybody need another one, one of those? I'll take one. Yeah. Yeah. And I also passed around the health insurance increases yes. yeah. that are there, which are the two things I left out. Can you explain just what the yeah. 16? It was a 4.5 percent increase, 2016. Can you just explain the top numbers that were written in hand? Uh, and those are not, these are for breakdowns within our system. Yes. Yeah, so, so we don't need to ignore them. Single, Thank you. Yeah. 
single uh, two person, person family. family. Oh, okay. And these so are the yeah. plans. This is the VHP plan that cut off on yours, and this was the JY plan that was in. So this was our business office doing totals. So okay. the the what you need to know in each of these pages represents this the, uh, 2016 year. The increase was 4.5 percent. Sorry, do we have another one of those? Yes, yeah, there's right. a pile. Oh, yeah. Whole pack oh, thank and you. this is valid for how many years? One year. One year. Right. So we've got we've got we've got, we've got the yeah, top page is 16. Going I'll keep going. I was do 17 was 8 percent. Okay. Um, 2018 went down 22 percent. Wow. And 30 percent. And 30 percent for what? That is when the plans changed. That is when VHI went to the new structure of health insurance plans. Okay. You could select what level you wanted. The old ones went away. Yeah. So uh, now it's mid year that they did that then? Because the plan begins in July. What am I doing this? Why don't you do this? Well, because I wasn't here back oh, okay. then. I, so this is purely from my prior career that I know these answers. <laughs> 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 um, so yes, when the VHI changed the health insurance plans, which is all part of Obama's yeah. health care directives, that is when you saw the reduction from the old plans in 2017 to 2018. That's it. And then in 2019, when they started to get mm -hmm. more control and knowledge about what rates are going to be, they went back up um, 8 to 10 percent, depending on which health plan you chose, because you could choose from any of the portfolio plans that were offered. Okay. Similar to what everyone experienced when they, if they had to enroll in the Vermont Health Connect, where you could choose. Yep which ones best fit your needs. Um, in FY20, they are up 4 to 12%, depending on which plan that you chose. Oh, that's it. Thank you. I tried to put Did your you packets in order. Yeah, it, it was almost in order. The last two pages are switched. <laughs> what is yes. this? Um, 19 just, was 8 to 10%. Why does the, the this title of this say FY16? Because this is the first page. That's the right. Oh, I see. Yeah. So then you got, so the, you got, you got each page historically. Yeah. The, last, the last two okay, pages are swapped. They're I like all my information on one page on right. the first oh, page. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. No, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. No, not only is it not on one page, it's on six pages. Pages and they're single-sided, so we're not saving any paper. I can't take responsibility for that. I didn't copy them. <laughs> Rosie, um, <laughs> come on, <laughs> boss control. So, can, if, unless anybody has a question about that, yeah. can we go back and, and talk about the treasure? So I, have, I see that there's I, this is going to take some explaining for me to right, understand well, I mean, all this. I guess the was top, um, what Jane did, because Jane is the one that works very, very closely with the treasurers. Okay. Um, she's the one that does all and of Jane our. Jane is who? Jane sorry. Kelly. She's my account. Oh, yes, you. Thank you. She does our grants. She does our sped. Over helps oversee sped. She does all of my bank reconciliations for each of our districts. So she works with your treasurers to get bank records, deposit records, and. Okay, and how does a treasurer get that stuff? The, the, the bank. The bank is um, sending at the end of the month to the treasurer the statements from yep. our bank accounts. Yep, and then they send it to Jane. And when you say our bank accounts, what bank accounts are you talking about? Your general about? operating account. The schools. And any other potential the schools accounts that you as a district account. have. Right, okay. So, so it was money that goes to pay, to pay those bills. And... Um, they, they do they really have like actual receipts from deposits? Are they actually literally making deposits, or yes. they just get? Yes, they're going to the town clerk and your getting checks them. Checks go to your treasurer, and your treasurer takes it to the bank. Okay, does a deposit, gets a deposit slip, fills out a deposit slip, gets a receipt when they go to the bank, and that's all the backup documentation that they have to send to Jane when she does the reconciliation and actually enters all of your revenues mm -hmm. into the Infinite Vision software so that your budget reports work. Does so, this person get paid? Yes. E e yeah, and that, 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 that's kind of a separate, another question, but yes. Okay. Yeah, there is, a, there is money in the budget for them. It okay, seems good. to be, have been compiled into a one line in our budget though, yeah. so we need to maybe as a, when for your next for our next budget, we need to make sure to break that out because that was the intention. Mm -hmm. And for some for some reason, it all ends up on one line. Gotcha. What else is it on the line with? You it, the secretary. Gotcha. Um, so who, I, just because I to learn of what treasurers do, the yeah. who is sending the treasurer checks? The state of Vermont, they the town, the state of Vermont. The payments that you get from the state are usually. ACH, which okay. is automatic, you know, direct deposit type okay. of things. 
that come in from the state tax department. Okay. Your town clerk for each of your towns who's collecting your taxes right. would send a check to, to the your treasurer. school board treasurer. Okay. When we send reimbursement back to your districts for grants, okay. those checks go from us to your treasurer. Mm -hmm. And your treasurer does the deposits. We, as the supervisory union, the only access I have to your bank accounts is view only. Okay. So I can go online and I can see not all of your accounts. Like I don't have access to your White River Credit Union, I think is mm -hmm. what it's called. That's something that we've been trying to reach out to the t um, Rochester. Okay. It's not the Stockbridge person. It's only the Rochester town clerk that had access to that account. So Jane's been trying to get that okay. because we're trying to, we can't reconcile that account because we have no documentation on it. Right. Um, how was this even happening last year? Because we didn't really have a treasurer, did no, we? No, Joanne was finishing sure. up. No, yeah, Kathy. Kathy was our. No, Kathy, Kathy Brown was our treasurer all last year. The town clerk of Stockbridge. Oh, okay, so she was doing for both towns. Right, we for the district, we just for one. Yes, okay, yes, so it was our district. She, which and is then what she's we're leaving. Okay, we will sorry, continue just, to need just one going forward. You only have you one treasurer. Yes, yes. Right, going forward, we only need one. Okay. It's useful to have a short memory because things get reconfirmed. Lunch money deposits, which would come from the school. Right. Don't they all go to? I mean, yes, they go to your treasurer. Right. Okay. Like, just so I'm you know, of what and, and, yeah, and I'm just thinking some other. Yeah, some other depends on the district because I have some districts that have deposit slips. Okay. Right. Well, that, that their administrative office. assistant has a deposit slip to go and do the food service deposit themselves, and then they just send a copy to the treasurer and to the supervisor Does in the office. One planet work that way too. One planet. All of their money goes to one planet. And one planet makes we make that deposit on behalf of one planet. <coughs> Excuse me, bless you. Because one uh, planet is paid out of the S. And budget. I'm sorry, what bank do we use? Mascom. So what, somebody would need to take a trip over to um, Bethel is where Mascom is. The closest yes. one. Yeah, closest one is Bethel. I don't know that answer. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. I used, Morty, to, Morty Morty used to own my agency. You'd think I know where all Mascola. the branches are, okay. but I don't. No, nope, that's fine. All right, Randolph so has one I understand too. that. Thank you. Uh, make deposits and transfer school money, taxes. Yep, okay. Um, we'll draw TAN money. And so that would be something that you would approach the treasurer and say you need to TAN take money. out I, tax amount of money. money. I do that's not true. tell your treasurer when to draw down your TAN because your treasurer knows what's available in your bank account and can oh. make that decision on their own when they need to pull down your TAN to cover expenditures. Okay. We, we have to instruct We them? go to the, the so RFP process right. for the TAN on behalf of each of the schools, which is what you okay. approved. Right. A couple of meetings. So they ago. they reconcile them. Yes. All uh, of uh, their bank accounts. They account, should. The bank account. And then we also do it. And okay. the ultimate goal is when Jane sends them her reconciliation, they match. Right. That's, That's when we like it. So we really do. We have to have somebody who's an accountant. Yeah. yeah. And not, not too well savvy. necessarily well, an accountant, but they need like to, to be. Yeah. But they don't just swipe More of an accountant. Right. Yeah. 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 More an accountant than I, I would, am. Yeah. yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. Suggest that they, you know, have some bookkeeping maybe or, you know, they're experience. really good in their own checkbook. I mean, if we could get, if we could get Desiree, that would be wonderful. Not me. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I can't um, tell you who to pick. Maintain a cash flow. The norm is it's your town clerk for most of our other districts. It's either the town clerk or the town treasurer if there's a different one. I mean, that's, that's because this is kind of the stuff that they're doing for the town anyway. Exactly. They're doing the exact okay. same duties. They know the rules and regulations. They know, you mm -hmm. know how things work. So is the town treasurer and the I'll town clerk the same? Not always. It but depends it can on the town. Okay. Okay. Right. Be over there. All right. And um, like for an ex I can give you one example, you know, just because of my own old prior experience, like F Chelsea in Tunbridge, they have two separate individuals. Okay. Chelsea has a town clerk and they have a town treasurer because that's the town that I live in. Yeah. And then Tunbridge also has a town clerk and a town treasurer. And the Tunbridge town treasurer is the treasurer for the school district. Yeah. Okay. Um, mail out accounts payable or payroll checks? They actually yes. mail so out. When we physically do the warrants, yeah. 
you get a copy of the warrant itself and then the backup documentation, right. which is your copy of your check, the copy of the invoice, and any other information Sorry, that we have. Sir, can you tell me what a warrant is? A warrant's what you sign to give us permission to release checks. Jamie. It's a list. I it's that usually that. a list that says you're paying this, you know, you you're paying this much to. $78,000 for tuition for these five kids, right. you know, that kind of thing. It's I basically it a stack of bills yep. that there's usually a cover letter on, and you're just authorizing it. Yes, please pay that stack of bills. Yeah. Right. So what they get, you what the treasurer it. actually gets, is the physical check. Okay. Because they sign the physical check, they and then they mail they... it out from their office. Okay. And then every couple of weeks, we come around and pick up all those black folders that you all get to sign, and okay. then we take them back to the SU, and the copy of the check and all that backup documentation then goes back into jo uh, Johanna's AP files. So they don't have to keep that with those records they nope. but it's passive okay. because you, most of them literally just after they've pulled the physical check out they put everything back in the black binder and they stick it on the shelf and we know okay. where it is we come in we grab it and we go on okay well thank you that gives me a very very clear understanding of what the treasurer any does. candidates yep please feel free to reach out to jane because she is happy to talk to any of okay. them and does she have a direct line or I don't know what her extension is. Just call just my call office Christine. line. Seven six three seven seven nine. Or what's my eight, eight four? Seven, six, no, that's zero. that's the S extension. Oh, no, is one one one. Mine no seven nine nine five. What is my seven your nine nine five? Is your extension. <laughs> Wait a minute! I got a business one, one, card. One. Hold on. Yeah, I, always have, I, always have, I always have to look on the emails to, to, that you send. Here we go. I'll give them. you one of these. Okay. My phone you. number is seven seven nine five. Dial the other number. <laughs> See, I didn't even know one, that worked. One, one. See, Lindy knows because she calls. Okay, me. wonderful. Thank you. Um, <laughs> did, did anybody? I mean, I, I would like to go ahead and approach Desiree again at the bank. Um, I had approached her when we originally joined. Yes. Um, yeah. She yeah. Uh, now there's a better understanding, and she'll have some support. Does anybody mm -hmm. else have any other ideas? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Who's our new board? Yeah, I think her. that Kathy said, you know, she's just going to be learning her position. Well, same right. thing as ours. Uh, that's what our town clerk yeah. had said, was that there's so much that they are learning just for the town that to add another thing was yeah. Yeah. quite overwhelming. Yep. So, okay, I, I have a couple ideas, but if anybody else thinks of anybody. I mean, if Cesare mm -hmm. says no, um, Becky Klein said no, but let me know, right? That was the other Yeah, part she of it. said, she immediately said no, but then she said, oh, well, what does a treasurer do? Yeah, yeah. She certainly got the experience right, of those kind of activities because she's worked at the town office for so long. What's the salary? Well, it's not, there's not a line item in the current budget we for put, a treasurer. We, right, we put one in the, well, we, we warned us the salary when we did that whole like articles of unification or whatever. Wasn't there a dollar amount put in that? No, there was no. It was it was bundled together as and it, there, it is one line item yeah. and it's not it's noted total. that it is one li that it is a bundle. So yeah, when we are, you and I had to dig to find it. Yeah, when we originally, um, I think it's only the, either a thousand or fifty. It was a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you it's the a, amount. I, I have that. Our full salary is a thousand dollars. Admin that. Here's the board. Right. So it, there is no. Um, my folder. It says clerical salary. And I, I know our intention was that w there was the secretary and the treasurer, right. and that they each got a, a, so, a portion of that. Right. I and thought that I thought it was 800 for the for the treasurer and 200 for the secretary. Right. All the secretary really had to do was that annual meeting. Oh, just minutes. the annual meeting, right? Um, but it it is not specific in the warning that so that's, so we have to wait till next budget who, i believe who would be paying these checks mm -hmm. like you do you pay us we physically write the checks but your district pays for um back back yeah. Yeah. Back it pays like our year before because i would i would um amy if it if it if it makes a difference and we i don't know if we can do this how hard but i would take less salary to give this treasurer who sounds like they're doing quite a bit more money for this job Okay. Personally, yeah. I would yeah. do that. Yeah, because yeah. 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 I, I just think you know this is this is this it's is involved. you want to have somebody totally reliable and yeah. who's really mm -hmm. you know can make the commitment. And that's and why oftentimes it is the town treasurer because they're that's where your stuff is normally going. They're doing it already for the town, mm -hmm. and yeah. it's just yeah. one more set of books that they have to keep. But just to keep that in no yeah. mind, that maybe where there's an, if there's a negotiation about the money, we could certainly okay. talk yeah. about that. Absolutely, okay. wonderful. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And Thank truly, you, Amy, yeah, for I mean, taking have that them on. Reach out I would definitely Jane. have them reach out. Yeah, because she's happy to. 
to help and explain in any way because she they will have the most interaction with Jane. Mm -hmm. great. great. Thank you. And Johanna, yeah. obviously. This has been Johanna writes the checks. <laughs> mm -hmm. so this Definitely. is great to yes. get to move on this. We need to move on this immediately because Kathy Brown is leaving. At the end mm -hmm. of this month. Yeah. Right? <laughs> The end of August is like yeah. everything. She's everything. Her life hangs by a thread. <laughs> As in everybody. I mean, no, was wasn't like, supposed to be like this. Yeah. yeah. This is going to come down one way or another. Okay. All right. It's going to come down one way. Um, so then just the, the two action items that I had, I had brought forward, I think one of them, you know, uh, I, I think it's important that at least in the short term, uh, until we have some clarity around where our tax dollars are going, that we really, we, we as a board, we only pay essential, uh, essential expenses, not tuitions and not, and not uh, central office funds. As we long as we're not getting interest on any of those. I just started to see this week some of the tuition invoicing starting for the next year because a lot of the schools want their first payment due August 1st and they're just getting their invoices out. So just August 1st they want it? They do. A lot of them bill for August 1st, some of them bill for September You don't even know for sure if the kid's going to be there or not. Yeah. The one I got today was from well, Cardi Mountain. It has to do with Mountain. them needing some cash flow. Right. Yeah. Of course, everybody's in the same right. boat. And, you know, you know normally it's, it's one thing. Is, I, normally you, you, we just write the checks and, yeah, we pay a few weeks of interest on the tax anticipation note till we get the till we get the revenues in. Right. But I'm just concerned that we don't know. Your first deposit from the Ed Fund comes the end of September. Uh, so September. until we have some clarity, September we should probably... September 30th is the first deposit from the education fund. Your taxes right. obviously usually come in end of August. Right, but until the we... Because the town has 20 days from the date that they have it due to pay the school district by statute. Right. Okay. And what we don't know, though, is what we're going to get, right. you know, what we're going to get what in. We're actually going right. to do and August 15th. I agree. I think, though, if there is a, if there's no school that charges interest for. Not that I'm aware of. Okay. I mean, the things that you really want to be careful of are the, util the, the utilities, your right. food service. You need to make sure that your food service stuff is paid for. Salaries. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. so this does sound like a good one. Top priority. Yeah. Let them come after us. I mean, you know, I guess they could borrow the kids, right, or they something just, like that. They're in school. They just send the bill again. I mean, that's Yeah, no, no, then that's... My, when we were arguing, when some families really didn't understand that you had to, like, bring in a copy of your utility bill to prove, well, I filled right. out this form. Well, that doesn't really I need to see. To I need, we need right. more. I need right. physical proof. Um, Right. Well, and we've had there there have been instances where someone has said, "Oh yeah, I own property," and they've 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 you know put it put either fabricated an address or they've 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 they they do own property, but it's not a homestead property. They just own a piece of land, and they they think that might count, you know, and that doesn't. You can't you can't own. You so know, so a they'll piece just rebuild. Was what the right. the, right. the, the yeah. school will yeah. just yeah. rebuild us if we don't pay I don't, us. I can't think of any tuition bill that I've. Okay. Well, I think, think that's a good place to start the because then we can them. make sure that we have food in the cafeteria and that we are able to pay our staff. Right, right. right. Well, and again, so we, we have a tax anticipation note that we could just we could just draw down and trust that things are going to be the fine. interest as best we can on that. But yeah, I think the, I, 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 if, if this, drew, if this we, Carl, who are we instructing with this? Um, we're instructing the board, to us, because the no, people... No, but I'm saying we t who's paying, who would be paying these tuition checks? Everything so comes to Janet or I, central office. I write, so. Joe writes all checks. So all invoices come into the central office once they have been processed with, in, within your building. So they have to, the process for invoicing is the invoice comes in, the administrative assistant of that building, and this situation for you guys this year being with the change here, Janet Brown, oh, not Janet Whitaker. Whitaker. Janet Whitaker <laughs> is doing invoicing for both of your buildings gotcha. so it comes in she looks at the budget that you approved mm -hmm. and identifies what account code that that invoice needs to go to okay she codes that invoice and then it goes to your building administrators to review and approve make sure she's got can it in she the right get, can she get in any trouble by us telling her not to pay these bills Okay. No, and actually, where I think it would they the best place to have it stop is the is at that remember that warrant stage. Yes. So the warrant usually looks, looks like a packet. It's got a big kind of spreadsheet page that says so Amazon sign. seventy five dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Sharon Academy seventy eight thousand um, dollars. Green yeah. Mountain Power four hundred and thirty seven dollars. Blah blah blah. And what she can do is she can say, I'm going to sign these ones. I'm going to sign the payroll. I'm going to sign the the electric bill. I'm going to sign the internet bill. Mm -hmm. I'm 
I'm not going to sign the tuition bills. I'm not going to sign the. Uh, we, but it the, doesn't even get sent over to go on the warrant. I think okay, you give us the directive. Because yeah, the be don't then, then so we, that's what I just want. Yeah, so let's yeah. do that. Okay. Communication. So, so we're giving you the, the instructions. Yeah, I, I don't know if yeah. you have to vote on that or not, but like if you're giving the directive, then that's what Janet will just hold it all until we get this sorted. Then let's do that. If that's what you're comfortable with. I think I think we should. We, do we need a motion on this, or do we just do we just? I don't think we do. I think we just. It's just an instruction. And do we all in agreement on this? Yes. I think we should be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I, I, yeah. um, I would the, just mimic Deb's statement. You really should. I think you've already paid salary. your first month's SPED assessment. I think it's already come in because your SPED teachers need to get paid. Yeah, I don't I don't think I ever see a bill for that. But, so I'm yeah, so I, I, I would, saying I don't see assessment. So it's not it's not because I remember it and this was this was this was I haven't signed an in uh, an invoice uh, in a while, but they used to be it used to be at least when I specifically remember from Windsor Northwest, there just being one unit, one bill that had just everything on it. There is one bill because I do the central office assessment. I bill that out. So there is one bill that you got that for your first quarter central office assessment was already done in July. So I had already billed out quarter one. I won't bill the next quarter until October 1st for central office. So that's me. That's Mary Ellen. Right. That's Cynthia. That's Ray. Mm -hmm. That's your. That's Christy and Bruce that's and tech. No, SPED is done by a different assessment, oh, okay. billed separately, done monthly. But because we need to have money in the SPED budget to cover payroll, I asked that the SPED assessments for the first six months be issued to each of the districts. So you'll see a lump, a larger lump sum for the second SPED assessment versus the first month SPED assessment, which went out in July. This is all, I hate the reason why we're doing this, but I, it's all very good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the it's inner really work. It's extremely important mm -hmm. that you yeah, understand yeah. the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's oh, yeah. how you are physically, fiscally responsible as a board. You, you need mm -hmm. to understand how it works. And some of the issues that we've had in other districts is that they don't understand the process and they get some miscommunication from vendors and, mm -hmm. you know, then they end up being the sponge to that anger because they don't understand the process. Mm -hmm. And then the second piece we may want to take more of a formal action on, but I think it's important that as we um, have, have delved into the, 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 the student census is that we really, I think, need to have a, a, a policy that, that, that does say we will not pay any tuition bill that we have not seen a current. We do not. Know, we, we you put that into effect at the beginning of last yes. year, and yeah. we keep okay. It and so we because you were newly married. Right, so right. We talked about that, and that's what that's what that's what we had that directive. So okay. Not well, we had we had we yes. I'm glad that it was. You know, I guess I, I, I worry that you know was that was that something that David Larkham just kind of yeah. said, okay, I'm going to take care of that. No, it was. You know, it's very but, serious. Joe Hanna has a spreadsheet. Ginger okay. was the one that maintained that up until her. I can't tell you exactly what month it ended, but Johanna received the books that had the tuition residency verification forms in them, and there is a spreadsheet that identifies who have we've received one for and who we haven't, because those tuition residency forms are the folders I pulled to be able to do the tuition part of that spreadsheet okay. and compared it to what was on the spreadsheet. So that is the... SU's policy in the business office is that we will not pay a tuition bill and all of our receiving schools are aware unless we have tuition residency verification forms. Great. Okay. Great. As long as we, as long as we have you know a definitive statement yes, that, yeah, yeah. that the buck yeah. that the buck yeah. stops yeah. here. Are you kidding? And that this is you know, all. because yeah. Yeah. because it is Carl will get just as an example, Janet would get bills like and I'd be like, I'm pretty sure I just paid I signed off on Sharon. Like this is all looking familiar to me and Janet would be quick to point out, well, we must have just got this kid's form in because it says to, uh, residency verified next to a kid's name because they list out all the kids that they're billing you for. So while the bill may be for everybody, we're only paying this one kid because we have their tuition. So yeah. finally okay. have the their residency, residency verification. verification. Well, that's wonderful. I'm okay, very happy because again, that, that was yeah. you know seeing yeah. seeing a, the, some of the state of that mm -hmm. spreadsheet yeah. makes you know gave me pause that you know because again we had that was a very clear uh, comment from our two communities, especially for the Rochester residents who were not used to paying, you know, to, to uh, paying tuition and being and very clear that we were 
we were only sending out money if we if if we knew for sure you know we, we didn't remember a kid from last year because their you know families move and the other piece that that becomes complicated is um you know it's parental uh, custodial rights have nothing to do with it you know you could, the mom could have all the custody if dad lives in stockbridge they can claim they they can claim stockbridge because it, as long as there is a parent here and that that has been a problem in the past when we've had if it's a if it's a, a contentious divorce and dad may say you know what mom you're not you know you're you're not doing this that or the other um we've we've had issues where That's you know the, when the superintendent the, has to get involved yeah or you have to get a private detective to go and look at uh, look at an address and, and confirm that, that like, that's where the, the people are staying. Can I ask a follow-up question on that? Are we now that we've done this inventory of our counts the last several years, do we know now going forward that we will be doing our part absolutely accurate counts now that we're up to date? So Ray just, went to one of these trainings today, today because gotcha. he actually called me yesterday to be like, and Janet as well, what what do you need to know? What have you learned that you need to keep track of? So there's this whole Good. feature. He came down back and told me all about the yeah. Shelby had attended too. So he, he and I went back and forth about some questions like where are they pulling it from in our system, which is went to school, what screen is that, so we make sure it's entered in. Because when you clear on kids right now, it's, Great. it's blank. Yeah, and that so there is definitely the, the directive that I have given Ray is that my expectation for early on in this school year is that the administrative assistant team will be brought back to the SU office to do another training. They did have one in June um, when I pulled them all in to go over stuff. They will have additional trainings because what is put into web to school is the absolute pivotal information that impacts everything that's that we're we discovering do as a that's what we know now yeah. okay. that's what and we learned from this process one more step and I, I don't know if this happened prior but it will be happening this year is once we get the initial round of tuition invoices and we've compiled the FY 1920 tuition list I will bring that to you and I will ask you to go into executive session because of student records mm -hmm. and I would ask that you go through that list and we do the exact exercise that we just went through. Because that would, if we yes. don't get that system right, this is going to continue yeah. to be right. a problem. And, and we also, we, yeah, we also we, we have to be faultless. So right. their mm -hmm. problems are their yeah. problems. Because the other, the other problem with, 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 local, with, with local people has been, um, you know, you have a family that, that chooses to, 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 to come. We, we've had families co choose to come to Stockbridge just because they say, okay, I really don't want my kid to, to, to go to school X. I want my kid to, to, to have choice, mm -hmm. so I'm going to come and rent a place in Stockbridge and, 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 and live there. And so there's, fa there's names that show up People that are valid. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we need to make sure that we're, we're capturing them and, and, and getting that sort of information. I know one example already of a family where there's, uh, the mother is here and Rochester, the father's in Stockbridge, and they chose to send pre-K, their kid to pre-K in Stockbridge because the hours were better. So something like that oh. has got to be listed. Right, because that is, pre-K is, um, is tuition. Pre-K is a little bit. Sir. Pre-K, no. you can go anywhere. It's, a, it's just like pre, uh, school choice. Okay. Do you want to get to the meeting? Or, yeah, there's, oh, or public uh, comment. Public comment. Um, there's, there, there's the last public comment, and then we're going to talk I about what our next meeting is. That's you, I Mason. Just, yeah. <laughs> okay. I knew you were kind of coming. Closer and closer. Um, I am so sorry that you guys are all dealing with so much. But I want to come back to our carbon footprint issue and talk about our overall school maintenance when it comes to the outdoors and knowing what the inventory is of the equipment that we have. And I understand everybody's been busy and you're thinking that you might like to actually see if that electric trimmer is still in I the inventory. I talked to Bonnie about it. Is it still here? I don't know. I didn't right. hear an answer. So. Right. We don't know. You mentioned this several meetings ago, and so right. we probably should have well, an answer for you. you know, I understand the process of our you know, mm -hmm. ability to follow through with our amnesia because all the other stuff comes up all the time. Uh, but in the long term, when it comes to cost saving and education, as you were speaking of, hey, if we teach reading right, we might actually save some money here, but we can actually do outdoor maintenance better. 
and right and better carbon footprint and be educational. So just for the long term, we don't have to continue with the same old, same old where the administration kind of looks at maintenance and says, go do that. You know, maintenance needs to be educated along with the cooking staff and everything else. There is a component that all the staff is educated to reflect education. That's my own spiel of the day for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for thank being you. consistent in your message. I just want to um, figure out going forward for this week, are we going to put out something to our communities? Like, a, we, need to, we need to have something that we can post in our town clerks. We just need to keep everyone as updated as we can so that we can post Did we online. Did invite Martha to this? I sent her a note. Okay. She gets a warning. She's on the Okay. Yeah. Cause this I mean, been or the Herald is. I don't know if it's her email. But yeah. it, it's uh, right. It's I think you, Megan has a very good point. We yeah. think we had a meeting. We had some people here. We don't have a lot to update, but we do have something. Yep. I think right. We need I'll, to I'll, 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 I'll right. put together a, a, a paragraph or two, and, and we'll I'll I send it around for comment. I have an expectation comment. that Jennifer will communicate with me before the 23rd to kind of go over as they've gotten the time to go through the additional spreadsheets. Right. And once I have any communication with her, I will absolutely share that with you. Just, you know this, but I don't know if, ever, and you two know this because I shared it last night. I am in some food authority training next week. It's mandated by the state and federal government. You're in what training? School food authority. Okay. Because we do not have a food service manager, it automatically defaults to your business it manager. Is very safe. Interesting. And I it's crazy. have to be talking recipes. I have to. Go. <laughs> I yes, it's part of it. Creating recipes really? and creating. Well, you have to have. You have to have so many units of vegetables. No, but seriously, and, yeah, I, I mean, the with all that you I have know, to do exactly. and the new stuff, I have to go. Food. Otherwise, no, we don't get no, our food service funding. They will. It was a discussion. It's a violation. Was to do else. Well, but he was. So talking. I have to go, and it's yeah. all next week. But he was at Middlebury High School. Oh my God. I was totally throwing a curveball when I found out when we had this our food service This was one of Ginger's duties. But as prior to a like business manager. This is going to be, but she, this was her assignment by Donna. So I will be educated. So. Next week. Wow, well, <laughs> we're so happy for you. Yeah. Where are you yeah. staying? Thanks in the for area. sharing. Well, you, and just keep us. Are you going to actually get some good food? How long do you think it's going to take from Chelsea to middle? An hour and a half. Oh, yeah. 45, 45. Yeah. No, you think you can, I think you can, I think you can. Maybe you can tell my husband. It's going to be an hour each way. Where is yeah. it in Middlebury? No, Middlebury High that. School? Okay, from here to Middlebury High School, you can get in about 50 minutes if you do not get stuck. Oh, yeah, there. From yeah. here and like, yeah, drive like, so I think like it's 50? 40, 40, I think it's oh, 15 minutes from Rochester. To I've been doing it. I've been <laughs> doing it pretty consistently 25. But it takes me 45 minutes to get here. Right. 25 right. from here. <laughs> from this point, <laughs> no, that's tw gone either way. Okay. 25. 25 is safe. Wouldn't it pay to get on 89? I don't, that's what I don't know, because I no. can get on 89, no, 89 in Berlin. Take, yeah. Well, yeah, but then that, you get no, on no. in Williston or no, 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 go no, down You don't want to do that. I thought yeah, you no. said Montpelier High School. It's, it's at Middlebury. Middlebury. Yeah. Oh, Middlebury High School. Yeah. You want to come over here. And then yeah. I, the Thursday, after the class is out, I'm headed to, where am I going? Groton stay. State Park Groton for stay on large Park. lodge to join all of you. At, hopefully for some of it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, please okay. take care of yourself yeah. so that you don't burn out. Yep. <laughs> One last thing. Um, yes. I just want to discuss is a possibility of our board coming together to compose a letter to the state. Just I think it should be on our letterhead. I think it should be signed by all of us. I think yep. it should be. Yep. Addressed Let's and uh, to Governor to Scott, Governor Scott to the AOE, to, yeah. to, yeah. Dave, to Dan French or Dave French or whatever his name is. Um, but I think we should formally file yeah. something. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's great. That'd be my only recommendation. What's that? I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure you yeah. do it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I'm going to actually probably ask Dina. I mean, we 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 sort That's of implied fine, yeah. that she was going to start a draft of it. I'm hoping that she will give I us a. Yeah, know, definitely. Because we need step yeah. by step of what the particular things that messed yes. us up. I think it's really. So we, are you going? Should we write Dina and ask her? If she's no, I'm going to tell. No. I'll be talking. Thank you. Thank you. I think. Okay. And I will get. I will. I will when, obviously, I will not. Once once she has something, I will. I will circulate it, okay. and then yep. okay. we'll do the whole. Everyone sends me feedback individually, so we don't violate yep. quorum. Yep. And then make Bruce's hair fall out. One question, Bruce. 
said, and it never really got answered, do you want Bonnie and I to go through the budget tightening with me exercise? And if so, what's... This is just... What do you... Please. Well, the, the thought, the, 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 the question that I had, and I wasn't going to, didn't want to necessarily say it in front right, of everyone else, yeah. is <clears throat> view of the time to do that, if that's something that you have, have, you know, but I think the most important thing is to get the school open and, and get and deal with, with all those sorts of things because, you know, we can always, we can always, you know, burn that bridge when we come to it. Well, I think also just, no, you know, you know now yeah, where budget. we stand, yeah. not that you need to go through and maybe pick stuff out, but you have kind of an idea that maybe You'll we keep it shouldn't be buying some of that. $131,000 is oh, very different than what, you know. Yeah, whatever it would be if we're only a couple percent, you know, difference. Yes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. And right, and that's part of it. We don't know. Of our mind. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I, I'm really what I'm really hoping is that again, you know, I, both Cheryl and Dick seem to seem to say, you know what, yeah, you, you guys put together a good faith budget, mm -hmm. and I think going forward that's going to be one. that's going to be the, the most the, the simplest thing, and we'll see. If we, because we can get that, then we don't have to cut anything because they've they've said you guys put together a budget and we screwed up, and right. so your budget your budget stands, your budget and its numbers stand. So I know it's, it's morale. Your, I would worry for morale and whatnot, but right. well, yeah. we we had a PD day for Stockbridge teachers today on some of that PBIS stuff, and the question came up like, are we even going to be able to open? And that was like. Yes, we're opening. We're, we're moving Please tell them yeah. absolutely. Any teacher, uh, was she there? One of the two was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, just very anxious. Yeah, of course. They, sure, they, they don't understand it. So it was. Right. Yeah. I think it's a v important thing to put Carl in in the you know the basic stuff like that in this letter that we don't get too. I mean, we want the complicated information of what we've gone back and forth, but also that schools will be opening. You yeah. know, people will be paid. Basic basic information is what people want. You mean for the community? Yeah, to yeah. The, this is what I'm just as saying. Well for the teachers this is the and word our staff. this is the word we can put out too. Right. Schools will be opening, teachers will be paid. Yeah. Um, food will show up. <laughs> Don't worry. The know. lights will be on. Yeah, the lights will be on. <laughs> well, I maybe. Think, well, but I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, the the, 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 the reality <laughs> is, of it is when the bottom line happens, you are going to be funded what your approved budget is, unless for some reason we have to go back and redo the budget. What makes the difference is what you're getting from taxes versus what you're getting from the education spending fund. Yep. That's the difference. The bo your bottom line number, that's still what you're getting. I mean, that for what we have for four. Right, or, 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 or we, we think, we think so at this point. Yeah. I mean, I mean that, if everything. That's how it works. I mean, you, right, right, but we may not be able to, again, if the states, if the states is, we're playing hardball, yeah. you pass this budget, we're, you know, we're giving you this penalty, right. we may we may, you know, at that point, be saying no. You're not. We're going to. We're going to push back, and we're not going to, you know, a, 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 a take. I mean, you know, sometimes if you take the if you take the bill or you take the invoice or accept it or take the check, that makes it harder to. Does that to serve the warrant? Them. Yeah, and then they serve the warrant on the person. They have to touch them physically with it. It's like no, no, no. You've been served. <laughs> I know that. It. Janie, when you're signing the warrant, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Okay. If I'm, I'm, in, go if I'm not tomorrow. in the office, uh, tomorrow I'll be in all day. Well, I'm in the administrator's meeting in the morning. What, and then I've got a meeting from 12 to 2, but otherwise. So should I not sign me. tuition tomorrow? There should, I don't, I don't believe there is any tuition. It's okay. probably a pretty small run. Okay. Just yeah. Time here. My, yeah. I don't, my recollection of what your run is, because that's also something new that I'm doing, is Johan is now required to give me a copy of all your warrants so that I can keep track of what's okay. being paid, because that wasn't something that I was regularly aware of, other because I just ran your expenditure reports, okay. and that's what I went by. So It will be good that comes out of this somehow. It just might be a little hard to find. You just want to know what till next May. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, this, right. I mean, this is really, you always try to find the good out of everything bad that happens. And I can say that in the business office, it's been very eye-opening mm -hmm. for my staff to really get an appreciation and an understanding of where our information comes from mm -hmm. yeah. and oh. how important it, it is. And what's in your control. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, yeah. it, it was very, it was a very good even though it was a very long and hard exercise, it was a very good exercise to go through because for me, I learned a ton well, it's cool. through this process. Good. Like I understand some of the stuff now that even as a board member literally went over my head. 
All right, well, our next, uh, our next meeting is going to be Tuesday, September 3rd. It'll be in the Stockbridge campus at 6.30 p.m. Um, uh, with that said, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. No. I make such a motion. <laughs> <laughs> Second that motion. All in favor. Aye. All in favor, aye. aye. aye.